Good morning, good afternoon. <laughs> uh, hello everyone, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I hope you're having a great day. We're getting snow today, so I hope wherever you are in the world, you are having an enjoyable day. Whether you like the snow, hopefully, if you like the snow, you're having snow, and if you don't like the snow, you've got some nice warm weather. This is what we're gonna paint today. If you could let me know in the chat, if you're watching on YouTube, if you can hear and see everything, that would be great. Um, we are going to sketch out this light bulb here, this Edison bulb. I have a reference photo here. Uh, I painted this back in July for World Watercolor Month, so I'm really hoping I can remember how I <laughs> put it all together. Um, and before we get going, I just want to let you know of a couple things. I am adding some new ornaments in the Hand Painted Holiday course. If you've bought that course in the past, you will find it in the class later on this week. No need to repurchase. Once you buy a class with me, you get any updates I add to it for free. So don't worry about that. Um, I do have it on sale for 40% off. And there's a link in the video description for anyone wanting to take the home the homemade holiday class, uh, hand painted holiday class. You will get all the past updates and all the past projects as well. So uh, just to let you know, all that information is in the video description. And also my alcohol uh, marker workshop is on launch special this month. It's 50% off. I always launch my classes 50% off when they're brand new so that uh, my the first the early adopters, the biggest fans get the best price. And you can find all of that information as well as supplies and a link to the reference photo and all that jazz in the video description. All right, so we're gonna start off by sketching. And this sketchbook here that I used for World Watercolor Month was made by my friend Rosie, who has the Etsy shop, Artsy Rosie. That's also linked in the video description. Make a great Christmas present. It's a luxurious uh, Arches watercolor paper sketchbook. Um, I'm going to just use a block of watercolor paper here. And this is the Bohong Academy Coal Press block. And that's a pretty affordable paper. It's 100% cotton. Um, I think it's around, $13 on Amazon if that's something you're interested in. I have my little uh, my little compass here. Um, make I will use it to make the top of our bulb. And I've got a mechanical pencil. Um, so you really don't need anything too fancy. The rest will be pretty easy to draw by hand, but I do want to get that, uh, that rounded bit pretty accurate. So um, I know I've been talking about these compasses quite a bit lately. I, they're like my favorite a little invention and they're so they're so expensive which makes it even better all right i'm just gonna take one of these smaller sizes and just whoops you gotta the, the only downside is you gotta make sure that you don't have anything right around it when you're sketching because it'll knock into it <laughs> but i like that it's flat and it will stay like you can keep it in your sketchbook or whatever so you don't need a whole circle you just basically need to get 180 degrees of your circle. Now I think I'm just gonna put a little dot actually where the center of that compass is because um, that's gonna help me line things up. So if I take my little T-square, which was another uh, find that um, I found, uh, I found the flat compasses and T-squares on Amazon. They're quite a they were quite a great find. I, I'll have to link them up later. They're on one of my recent sat chats, but I didn't think to add them to my supply list. I'm gonna go ahead and make a line going right down through my paper where I've drawn that. And I'm also gonna do one, I'm not gonna make a whole line, but what I'm gonna do is just put like a little ticky mark on the edge to show kind of the widest point of my circle here. You could draw, you could trace like a masking tape roll or washi tape roll, a dish, top, whatever you have, that will work just fine. So now I wanna figure out about where I want the base of my, um, my, uh, my husband's chatting at me at uh, Snapchat, <laughs> the notification on my phone. Um, I am going to figure out about where I want the bottom of my bulb to be. And I'm just making a really light line there. I mean, barely enough so you can see it, okay? And then uh, let's figure out about how wide I want it. I'm just gonna eyeball it here. And then I'm gonna draw a line from the widest point down to the line. Try to make sure this line here is coming out at equal parts. Ooh, I just totally hit my uh, water bucket there and flung water all over my table. But that's okay. Let's see if I did. If I did like uh, a centimeter and a half on each side, that would work out. I'm sure we don't use centimeters. <laughs> 
in America, it's probably it's probably like so many millimeters, 15 millimeters or something. You guys probably have it no more. People in other countries have probably have a much more elegant way to say centimeter and a half. Um, but I'm not elegant. Let's draw that right there. And I'm just going to give us a little bit of a curve here. Now that I've got that shape in there. Easy peasy. Okay. Now I'm going to draw this section here. It almost looks like kind of like a, like a hexagonal nut or something. Um, it's very like imperfect, which I like. It's got kind of like a, uh, you can see a little bit of the top like plane of it, but not a ton. Uh, Christina Todd just asked where I got the compass. I will do Q and A a little bit later, but uh, they're in a 12 pack on Amazon. You can buy one for like six bucks. You can get 12 for $10. I, you know what? I think I have it in my, if you go um, down in the video description, you'll see a, um, you'll see a like list to my, uh, link to my Amazon recommendations. I think that will, I think it's in there. I'm pretty sure I added it to that. I kind of like how it looks like this isn't quite screwed on perfectly. I like that. So I'm going to have it a little wonky. You can have it a little bit straighter if you prefer. Then we've got this uh, this shape here. It almost looks like a U. Again, we it's kind of a little bit crooked, and we can see a little bit of like that top, the top face of it. Not a lot, but a little bit of it. And of course, if you don't like to draw, you could always trace a reference photo. I enjoy drawing. I enjoy breaking it down. And that's going to curve in a little bit there. Just having a little line down your down your picture, I think, can help. Now, this side, it's not going to curve in quite as much because, um, because you've got this raised area there on that side. I'm kind of coming down in like a U shape. Looks like, and I will flip it over. I always flip them over. Um, I got to put this other little piece in here. It's going to drive me bananas to see that. So non-symmetrical. Um, oh, I just totally forgot what I was saying. I, oh, I will turn this upside down so that I can see um, if it looks indeed symmetrical. I just turn it upside down. So I hope that makes sense. And then we've got another little cylinder here. My goodness, my family is very active on the Snapchat today. <laughs> I got a family group and uh, I can see them chitter chit chatting. Between the, the YouTube chat and the Snapchat chat, <laughs> it's amazing I can focus. I think that looks all right because I know this is not going to be symmetrical because of that thickness there of that uh, raised ridge. But I think other than that, it looks pretty good. So I think I'm going to leave that there just for just leave that center line there just for a few minutes longer. I am going to wipe away the water on my table, though, because I'm feeling I'm going to drag that notepad through it. I mean my watercolor block through it. Goodness. I felt a little out of sorts today, so I think it's par for the course. We got all kinds of people chatting. That's so nice. All right, so in the, we've got this like little glass element in here. You can see it on the photo and on the um, on my picture. It's kind of like a rounded square with a little bump on the top. And then there's like these little, I don't know if it's another glass piece or a wire that's going across like that. I can zoom in a little bit there too. 
and then there's like another little glass tube. So see, this is where they have that center, that little center line in there it does help us just kind of keep things in check a little bit. And let's see, about how high does that go up? Well, like that, I would say. And now on the first one I did and I regret it, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do things a little bit differently than the first time I did it because I actually regretted um, using masking fluid because it was, my lines were just a little too chunky and looked a little too harsh. And I had to paint over a lot of those lines because of that. So I'm not going to do that here. But I think if you had like a ruling pen or maybe one of those, um, those fancier masking fluid applicator things, it might work a little bit better. Um, but I don't use masking fluid that much. So I never bothered with them. I was always kind of concerned that maybe they would clog up on me and there would be more hassle than they're worth. And because I don't particularly like the look of masking fluid all that much, I just decided not to, um, not to bother with it. But uh, if you have that or you're just really good at applying masking fluid, then go right ahead. Um, I just prefer to do, just do some gel pen at the end. I'm also going to do some colored pencil here. I'm going to use the Derwent Chroma Flows because that's what I used in this piece. And actually, um, I was I got a, a, ca a catalog from Blick in the mail last night and they had the Chromaflow pencils cheaper than I've ever seen them anywhere. They were $77. And so I went to look online and that sale wasn't online, but then I put the coupon code from the back of the catalog in and it brought that price and it brought the price down to $77. So I put that coupon code in the video description in case anybody is uh, has been wanting them. Um, they've been on sale before, like around 115 and stuff, but I'm like, I just feel like they're going to go cheaper. I've just it'd been a hunch of mine that they were going to get a little cheaper. And that's why I haven't really mentioned them when they have been on sale, but just not a really good sale. Cause I just had a hunch that they were going to go cheaper. So, um, so I would say now, if you've been looking for them, now would be a good time to buy. So now I'm going to get rid of some of my marks. I'm just going to use a white plastic eraser. I'm just going to get rid of the basically anything I don't really want to show. And we're going to put the background in and then I'll take uh, some Q&A because it will need to dry a little bit. So we'll get through, we'll get to that point and then, um, then we take a little, little break. I also want to put that little kind of like a, like a little nub in there on the top. This is a block, so I don't have to tape it down. Um, so if you are using just a loose piece of paper or you're working in a sketchbook, I would recommend, I'm just getting rid of my little corner mark there. I would recommend taping it down just so that it doesn't warp on you because the background's going to be pretty juicy. And I'm just going to dust away my brushes, dust away any crumbs right now. All right. I don't need to, well, I could put the, the detail on the, I think this is like one and one quarter must be just the uh, size of the fittings. So this is made out of by three quarters. There. All right. So the paint I'm using today is the um, Japanese color Boku Undo. What this is, is a um it's a set of sumi e or ganzai colors but it's it's a watercolor plus sumi e ink so it's got this kind of a slightly granulating pretty texture to it and um i thought that just worked really well with a color palette here so that's what we're going to use um i'm going to make sure i don't have any crumbs left in my brush and i'm going to go ahead and wet the background generously these little sets are really nice. The only downside is they don't have a palette with them. So you just need to have something nearby to, if you need to mix the colors. I think they generally, your Gansai colors do not come with a palette. And I think you're meant to use them without mixing. Use them kind of straight from the pan. I was watching a review video by Eve Bolt, or F Bolt, Bolt on YouTube, and she reviewed a, Ganzai palette holder that's made by another YouTuber called Studio of MM, I think it is. Um, and I thought that's a really great idea. I took an old core, like tin the core water, 
watercolors came in and I used um, poster putty to stick my like 24 set of Genzai Tambi paints in because I didn't like not having a mixing area. That really irked me. I thought it would make me use them. I, I, it hasn't made me use them any more than I did before. I thought it might, but um, but it didn't. I just have so many palettes of paint. I have a problem. I have a little bit of a addiction. I've somehow managed to get some dust. I think it probably has to do with the fact that I use this brush sometimes to just dust off my paper, as you saw me do with the crumbs there. What are you going for is uniform sheen. All right, so let's see. I'm going to use, let's put in some of this bluish black color. I didn't pre-spray these or anything. I think they, they act, oh yeah, they activate just fine and dandy. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So the key with any color that has sort of a granulating effect is you got to leave it be and you got to let the colors kind of settle out on the paper. Derwent Grapha, Grapha Tint work really well for this. Um, any of your, well, you know what, the, the, like the Schmincke super granulating colors will work well. I will say that these, this and the Graphitin, I feel like are, are a little bit bolder, like a little bit darker. So you might have a little bit better of luck with that. And now we are going to need some of the gray actually in the, the bulb itself. I'm going to go with, um, let's see. See, maybe some of this reddish black. I guess I could I could have wet over that whole area. It'll they'll bleed together. I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna get some of the um, yellowish black. I think I might do some brownish black in there too. I know it is a little bit, um, it can be a little bit weird to just kind of let the color go like that. Let's do some of the purplish black in the background. Probably have to blot off some of the puddles. Can be hard to see what you have for a color because when you have them really strong, they look very similar. Just gonna kind of let it run here, let them mix together a bit. Hopefully I'll still be able to see my lines when we're all done. I think I will. I'm gonna clean my brush off. I can already see some of the little bit of granulation happening. I do want a little bit darker of color around the edges, but I wanna sop up some of this first. So just wiping my brush off and setting in the puddles. I think I might move that a little bit. And don't worry, I'll get to your Q&A in just a minute. Once we get this background done, you want to get your background in um, all wet and wet. You don't want to be fussing with it. You want to get it in and leave it alone. You can also do this. You can go with your wet paper towel. Um, not wet, I'm sorry, dry paper towel, and you can hit the edges like that. Sometimes if it's if it's wet enough, it won't leave a white streak. You just want to kind of wick off that color. But I do want to put a little bit more dark on the edges. So I'm going to do, I think I'll do a mix of the bluish black and the purplish black. And just kind of give it like a bit of a vignette effect.
you got to keep it the you got to keep the uh, level of dampness the same until you're done and then just let it sit otherwise you're going to get back runs so if you do need to work back in an area just try to make sure you don't get any you're not getting any spots or drying faster than others and you don't want puddles I just want to break up that harder line there a little bit. And then one last thing I do is I will tap it on my table and that will just kind of help um, push out any lines that I might have. I'm going to dry my brush off. I have a fingerprint I just made. If you don't, ah, now I've got a, uh, now I've got a back run. Ah, that was frustrating. And that was mess. I didn't like that little space there. Try not to do what I'm doing here, fussing around with these, with these backgrounds. That's not what you should be doing. But sometimes it happens. You don't get it quite perfectly the first time and you're going in and adding. I was a little nervous to paint this on camera because when I'm doing like, when I'm painting and not recording, uh, I can focus a little bit better and uh, I tend not to get myself into these little predicaments. <laughs> All right, just check for puddles. Sop them up with a with a dry brush like I'm doing here. If you find any, and then we're gonna let this we're gonna let this dry up a little bit on its own before we um, before we force it dry. So I'll just tip it around. You can see how shiny that paper is right now. I'm just gonna let that dry up, and hopefully we won't have any hard edges. All right, so I'm going to take a look and see if we have any questions. So if you do have questions, type the word QUESTION in all caps, and then just type your question regularly, and that way um, it will, I'll, it'll catch my eye. And if you're watching the replay and you don't care about the Q&A, you can skip ahead a few minutes and uh, get back into the painting action. All right. I want to thank our moderators, Angela Clark of Clark Fine Art and Joe Maisky who also will help out with your questions. <laughs> Joy says, admitting you have the problem is a first step. <laughs> I think she's talking about my watercolor palette addiction. Um, and the, the Baohang paper, somebody was mentioning that, Deborah was mentioning that. Um, the hot, I've used the hot press too. I really like the hot press. And that's the Academy. That's a student grade. And it's really nice. I, I've never tried their artist grade one. Uh, that looks really good too. Uh, Clark Fine Art says she's waiting for FedEx to bring her her Sennelier Paris pastel set. They have, and I, I don't know if it's still on sale or not, but the 120 Sennelier set was on sale, pastel set was on sale for like $113 last week. It was crazy. If anybody has focusing problems, just uh, either adjust your settings to go to the 1080p or refresh your browser. It should be it should be nice and crisp. Uh, and if you're painting at home and you um, you might you might want to just let that dry fully on its own and then. Um, and then continue on. I will use a heat tool in a few minutes to speed that along. Let's see. Nerdy Watercolorist asks, can you give some tips related to intentionally creating blooms on cotton paper? Yeah, what you want to make a bloom on purpose is you want a difference between 
in wetness on your paper. So if you, you do your wash, you let it start to dry, then drop some water on it. And then you'll get a bloom wherever you put a water drop, or you can even draw on it with the brush, a wet brush. It's, it's when you have your paper not drying evenly, that's when you get a bloom. So just add really wet drops on top of a drying wash, but it's got to still be a little bit damp. Oh, Angela says the pastels dropped to 110. That's such a great deal. I thought about, uh, oh, they're still 110, Linda Stevens says. Oh, that's great. I've been thinking about, geez, should I grab an extra set to, for a backup? But I'm trying to be good. It's like, so it's, I don't know. My uh, my family gets mad at me if I buy myself something for before Christmas or this, this close to my Christmas or birthday, our Christmas or birthday. All right. I think. I have caught up to all the questions. All right, so what I'm gonna do is hit this with the heat tool. Oftentimes, if you're gonna get a bloom somewhere on your painting, it'll be at the edges. Um, and that's just because like the, the paint and water can collect and you might not realize it. Uh, sometimes when you have tape, the tape will almost act like a little bit of a dam and you'll have more water there than you realize. So if you let this dry naturally, you will have more texture in your wash. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, I don't want to make you wait. Oh, look at that right there. Is just exactly what I meant? I don't know if that shows up too much on camera, but there's a very, very, very slight back run there. And that's from there being a little water collected where the, the uh, adhesive on the edge of the block was. It was just enough to tra trap a little bit of water and make that section there dry a little bit slower than the paper on the interior. And... Um, might have it over here too. We'll see. I'm going to try to dry it pretty evenly, pretty quickly so that doesn't happen. But I was really surprised that this paint had granulation to it because I don't think of like Sumi ink being a granulating ink, but that seems to be the uh, be the thing that's giving it its granulation. And this paint is cheap. It's like 11 bucks for this set of six really good sized pans. Um, it's kind of, it's just, it's fun. It activates really well. And um that's neat i think they have another set this is the japanesque set but i think they have another one that's even that's brighter that has less black in it that's more uh, bold and they also have a um a graphite set which i didn't get because i have the derwent graphitants and i really like those and i don't see the point of having both because um because i like the derwents all right, the Derwents have more colors too. The Derwents have 12 colors. And we're going to use those in the um, in the area there. <laughs> $11, you say? Clicks link, adds to cart. Oh, Angela, I'm not I'm not a good influence on you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to, are these the graphitins? Yes, these are the graphitins here. And let's set that aside for a second. The only downside on those... Um, on those, actually, it's any of those little Sumi sets. They all come in cardboard boxes. So if you have like a huge like tsunami of water on your table, like I just had, uh, you have to watch out for them getting wet. All right, I'm gonna switch to a number eight round. The brushes I'm using today are from my signature set with Craft Ammo. They still have a few sets available if you were looking to get any of those. And I guess I'll turn my camera, my phone back on so I can see that color, the actual photograph of it. And usually I do pre-wet the, the Derwent pan paints because I find them to be a little bit drier and a little more thirsty feeling. So I think I will do that with a pipette so I don't, don't spray. Actually, these are in a plastic palette, so it would be totally fine to spray them. I mean, I spray my metal palettes as well. But And let's see. I think I want to use some, some of that green maybe some of that ochre color. Um, we'll start off there. We'll start off there. I'll probably grab some, uh, some regular watercolors as well. And of course my palette, it has been turned asunder. So let's see, is that the right color? Yeah. <laughs> and again, you'll get more texture if you let it, if you just kind of let it puddle up. You could add some italics in here as well. 
Actually, I do have my Derwent Metallics. Those are the pastels. They're kind of these are these are fun little palettes. I they're more of like a um, not a standalone palette, but just kind of like something fun to add to. I don't think I'm not gonna use all those colors, but I'm just might as well activate them in case I change my mind. Um, they're they're not standalone palettes. I'm sorry, I probably made the camera focus go all wonky. Sorry about that. But they are nice for just like little touches here and there. Some of this ochre color in there. Scrubbing a little bit on that side because I feel like the background got in a little too far. I was just checking uh, my paint did slurp out of the lines just a little bit so I didn't want to lift up the background um maybe I will do a little bit of that black that's in the um the Derwent because it's not a real it's a graphite black so it's much more soft and textured want to encourage um, a little bit of uh, mingling between the colors on the paper. I will grab some of that gold we are in the hot mess stage I might even grab some Mars Brown from my, or maybe even some, yeah, I'll grab some Mars Brown. I think that'll work good. I was going to say grab, grab some Mars Black, but I think Mars Brown, I need a little bit more of a warmer color. I can show you what that looks like. It looks like that right there. You could use a burnt sienna. Let's see what that blackish green looks like too on the Boku Undo paints. Let me see what that's all about. Oh, that's nice and black, but it does have that uh, green undertone. So I think I'll go in and put some of this where, oh, where I want some darker shadows and they'll just kind of mix and mingle. And you can just see how really ugly it looks before it's done, before we've got to the point where it looks good. <laughs> I 
And then having all this dark is going to make our color pencils really stand out. Probably end up scrubbing back a little there because my black went up a little too high. And I think I want a little bit more. Give me some of this green. That yellowy green that's really bright, but I think that might look good. Ooh, while I'm at it, I could just grab a little bit of cobalt teal since I've got my other palette handy. Well, I can add that with pencil too, but... It's kind of like you're sculpting with colors. All right. I'm going to see if there's any questions really quick. Um, I don't really want to dry that, but it is going to be challenging to work in the um, work in the top of the bulb without without um, disrupting it. You know what? If you've got questions, go ahead and post them. What I am going to do, I do want to get a little bit of like a a shadow within the glass there. So I think I'm gonna wet this area and put in some of that dark color around the edge. The Sumi colors do lift pretty well, surprisingly. Fun fact, when I first painted this, this was the day I got my new glasses. So um, I just remember that. I remember putting the background in and getting the call from my eye doctor that my glasses were ready. And I went to go pick them up. And then I was like, oh, I wonder if that's going to look good when I come back. Because then I'll be seeing properly. <laughs> I can touch that right into that color underneath and let some of that flow up even. Like that, I like that, the way that looks. Painting this upside down will help it, help me from getting my fingers, my hands in it. Like next week, I'm going to pre-record the um, comparison between watercolor ground, both white and transparent, and also um, clear gesso. See if there's much of a difference between using those. I could see I got water out. Well, no, maybe I didn't. I was thinking I got water outside of the lines, but... So that'll be coming up next week. I know next week is Thanksgiving, so I know I'll probably be pretty busy. My kids will be home. They get that Wednesday through the weekend off. I think I might lift out a little bit of color here. I want it to have a very translucent look. I think I might also put in a little bit of color. Maybe, I wonder what it would look like to put in some of that metallic orange. It's more of a, like a glitter than a um, pearl.
might be fun. All right, so we're gonna let this dry. And if you guys have questions, go ahead and post them in the chat. Starting to come along here. I'm also gonna grab my tin of chromophil pencils across the other side of the room because for some reason I was out of so out of sorts and forgot to grab them. There we go. Uh, all right, I still have a big puddle on my desk <laughs> to take care of. All right, let's see, do we have any questions? Then again, if you're watching the replay, you can go ahead and skip ahead a few minutes if you want to. Uh, was the first painting on the left done with Graffitin? It was done mostly with the um, the Boku, the Japanese Boku Undo colors here. I did use some, I think I used some Graffitin on it. Honestly, I was struggling remembering exactly what I used on this because I didn't record it. Um, but it was mostly the, the Boku Undo. And the uh, the next week's class will do, I'm going to be, I've already just sewed everything. Um, I'm using book pages and scrapbook paper and is there something else. I think map paper. Yeah, so I, I just put it on a few different interesting surfaces because especially the cleared um, ground, I thought that'd be really cool to see the stuff underneath it. All right, if you got a question, use the word question in all caps. And I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way, work my way up. I'm wondering if like the granulating watercolor trend is is kind of slowing down because um, I mean, we got, there's been such a glut of granulating watercolors. I'm wondering if it might be, it might kind of uh, start to go away the trend. Uh, Nicole the uh, Night Owl asks, when do you stop using your reference and start letting the painting inform you? I always have trouble getting too tight, trying to match a reference exactly instead of using it as a guide. I think it depends. I mean, it's, um, I think if I'm more caught, if I'm more familiar with the subject, I don't use, a, I, I kind of veer away from the reference once I've got the drawing and the basic colors down and just kind of go back if I need a, if I need to be um, informed about a certain reflection or texture or whatnot, I think it totally depends. If it's something I'm not very familiar with, I'll probably use a reference more. I'll rely on that a little bit more, like a crutch, I guess. Um, like if you have a crutch, if you just have a sprained ankle, you won't need it as much as if you have a broken foot or, you know what I mean? You lean on it as much as you need to. I don't think there's a specific only use it this much or only use it that much. But that's a great question. And you know, if you think you're relying on references too much, then you can do what Degas used to do uh, with his students is he would, he had a studio above a ballet studio. His art studio was above a ballet studio and he would take his students down to the ballet studio to watch the ballerinas while they were practicing. And then he would be like, okay, memorize it and then go all the way back to the studio and make his students draw it from memory. So you could do that. You could for you know train yourself to memorize better and observe better. Uh, Susan asks, how do the Derwent Metallics compare to other brands? They're very subtle. Um, they're much more subtle than, say, the uh, Paul Rubens. Let me show you. That's the Derwent Metallics on black and on white. The, the Derwent Metallics are, I think, a little bit more of a traditional. I'm trying to see if I might. I usually have my metallic palette right here. Uh, let me see if I, I can. I see it right now. I'm going to grab it and bring it over to my desk here so I can show you. Um, the Derwent metallics are more traditional. They're more like your gold, silver. There are a few tinted colors, but they're not. Um, oh, why do I have? <laughs> I don't know where my palette. I've got my box for my palette. Where's my palette? Oh my gosh, how embarrassing. Um, time to clean the studio, I guess. That's weird. Um, well, the, uh, <laughs> the Derwent metallics, as you can see, are a little bit more. Uh, muted and just like kind of more like your average metallic colors, but the uh, uh, like Paul Rubens is much more shiny. Paul Rubens is probably the most metallic-y metallics that I have, like the most colorful, glittery, bright metallics. And then um, the Derwent's are probably the more muted ones. There was like one called Niji, was it Niji? They were quite muted, but they had a big variety of colors. Um, you know, it, they're, they're kind of like a metallic for like accenting on traditional type of subjects. I don't think you'd want to paint a whole metallic painting in them. I don't think you have enough variety of color, but um, yeah, for what they are, they're nice. They're nice little accents. 
And that's what I use them for. But if I needed a lot of really bright metallic stuff, like I was working on black and I wanted to do like crazy, a uh, bold lettering or something holiday-ish. And I wanted those really bright reflective colors. I'd go the Paul Rubens. So it just depends on what you're after, honestly. So I hope that helps. They're just, they just feel more traditional to me. Um, Let's see. I hope I haven't missed any, but I see a lot of a lot of chatting. Okay, I'm gonna quickly dry this. If you guys have any other questions, by all means, I like that. I, I didn't put the metallic in the other one, but I really kind of just like that. It almost has a little bit of a glow to it. You will want to make sure your paper is absolutely dry before you do any colored pencil work um, or before you try to paint any of these little delicate lines in here because um, it will feather if your paper is damp. And if you try to use colored pencil on damp paper, it's going to flatten the tooth of the paper and make it so it's it'll, it'll be shiny and it'll be hard for anything to stick on top of it. So just make sure you get that good and dry. The colored pencils, I think, are what really makes this painting because it this we have such a dark key here everything is so dark then when you put those opaque colors on top they really just um they really just pop they really just look fantastic uh, susan sacco asks do you like the block you're working on i do i think i prefer their hot press one but if you if you're trying to get a granulating look you want that that texture on your paper because it what happens is the, uh, to get the granulating effect, you've got paint that's got heavier pigment particles in it. And then when you have a really watery wash, those pigment particles kind of, particles kind of suspend and they settle out from the, the water. And that's where you get that texture. And if you have a textured paper, those pigment particles will follow, will fall into the little nooks and crannies of your paper. And then you'll get that really pretty effect there. But I do like their hot press paper a lot. So if you prefer a hot press paper, I can recommend that without hesitation. And it's a great value. So, um, you know, it, it ticks a lot of boxes there. And it's available on Amazon now, which makes it a lot more convenient for uh, people to find. So I'm going to go with a liner brush. And honestly, I think you can use whatever you have left on your palette uh, that was like the um, any of your black colors because you're going to be using them so thinly. So I'm just going to use up this this blackish green that I already had out. But you could use um, you could use whatever. And I am going to see if I can See my little details here that I pencil drew in. See how you really can't even see the color undertone there where it's so dark. Uh, I'm gonna get the edges. I'm not gonna really outline everything. I just wanna kind of get an idea because when you're looking at glass things, you don't see, you know, they're transparent. You don't see every detail. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. I just wanna get some of these really thin wires that are in there, little filaments. I want to do this with the brush and not a pencil because I think my lines will be much more delicate and dainty if I do it this way, and that's what I'm after. And sometimes you will lose your drawing because um, you put more paint than you anticipated but that's okay. You drew it once. You can draw it again. Oh, I should probably open my reference photo. I was just going by my painting. But you're just kind of hinting at it. I wouldn't worry about making it absolutely perfect. Straighten out that edge. And you also want your paper dry because I, 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 when I'm using a liner, I want to steady my hand and steadying it against the paper is really, really convenient. Uh, 
All right. Okay, let's take a look at our pencil selection and pull out some that we will want to use. Now, if you don't have the Derwent Chroma Flow, don't worry. Any sort of waxy, opaque pencil is going to work really nice. These are uh, lovely pencils. They're very much like a Prismacolor. So if you live somewhere where it's difficult to get Prismacolors and you want that really soft, um, that soft buttery lead, these are a great option. So I'm gonna pull out some colors I really like to use for metals. I love to use like a teal color turquoise green. I believe this is in the smaller sets too. Um, maybe even that pastel mint might work. Uh, we'll do a black. We'll do probably some white. I somehow managed to completely cover my desk. I think I might even do um, a yellowy ochre color, but like this one's called Dijon. It's a little greenish. It's almost brassy rather than like a bright, a bright yellow. Uh, I'm gonna want something kind of orangey. And I think I want like, this is redwood, but I think I also want kind of like a peachy color too. Oh, here we go. That color looks good. I'm just going for this kind of like muted, muted color palette. Oh, this is a pretty color. This is a kind of ivory looking color. It's called Parmesan. Now, where's my white? Where's my white pencil? Here we go. And then, of course, I'll use a white gel pen as well. Um, I think it's really about all I'm going to need. Oh, wait, this is black. What did I pull out thinking it was black? Oh, coffee bean. Huh? I'm going to get black, too. All right. And, you know, approximate with what you have. Let's get our painting back over here. Yep, it feels warm to the touch, so I know we're dry. I'm going to start here on the... Um, on the body, I guess, or what you want to call it. I'm going to start here with my teal. I love this teal. It's called turquoise green. It's great for kind of patina. And that's another reason it's nice to have that textured surface because it will, um, it'll kind of, the, the this fixture kind of has this almost pocked texture to it and this is going to help grab that texture right off of our right off of our pencil very easily I'm going to round this out remember I told you I was going to round this out I'm going to do that with this light color here give that that shape of that um, molding there I think the arches might have had a little, about the same texture. I was thinking if the arches paper might have been a little bit more textured. I was looking in the, I got the Blick Holiday catalog yesterday, and I was looking in there. Arches paper has gotten so expensive over the years. But I feel like in most, most things, there hasn't really been a lot of art supply inflation. But I always tend to remember it's like what I paid for like a big batch or something, and it's like, oh my gosh, it used to be so much cheaper, but... I mean, that was, all, then I'm like, oh no, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I love the texture. Just that, just that one color, I feel like adds quite a bit of body and life to it. All right, I love to warm things up. I'm going to go in with this Dijon color. Now, one thing I will mention about these pencils is that because they're so soft, they will get used up quicker than other pencils. They're going to get used up about the same as like a Prismacolor would, um, which, you know, stands to reason they're soft, so you're putting down a lot of color at once. It's really nice if you have um, any sort of strength issues, any sort of uh, like arthritis, or if you just happen to like to work quickly like I do. I was going to say if you happen to be lazy like I am, but I'm trying not to use the L word with myself <laughs> as much as I do. <laughs> even though it's very fitting at times. I 
I like this color a lot. I like the muted tones, muted earth tones that there are in the Chroma Flow set. I think that mixing these with the Prismacolors, like putting them all together would actually be really nice because there's certain colors that you would have in the Chroma Flow that you wouldn't have in the Prismacolor. Even though they feel so similar, they actually would expand your Prismacolors, I think. This is a trick too, holding your pencil like this. So you've got like all four fingers on it and you're holding it. So it's like level um, can really help you get some really beautiful texture because it just skims across the surface and the, the tip of the pencil doesn't can't get into the nooks and crannies. So that's a really nice way to, um, to get some beautiful texture. Now I'm going to go in with this coffee bean actually. It's a really dark brown and I picked it up thinking it was black, but then I'm like, you know what? That would give us a nice warm... It's a nice warm shadow, and I think that would be really nice, especially as we get up into the light bulb here. Now, if you do want to keep a point and you do want to not have so much grain, like when you're doing in the glass, turn your pencil as you go. I'm a popular woman today. Snapchat and tag, you know, I go weeks without hearing from people. <laughs> I do a live stream and it's like, Miss Popularity. Hopefully there's not some sort of like <laughs> crisis going on in my town and it's like, beware, there's killer zombies on the loose. All right, I made a, there's a nubbin on that one. I put a nubbin there. I don't want that nubbin. So let's see if we can erase our nubbin here. <laughs> oh, yay. I didn't press too hard so I can. Close enough. There we go. All right. Hope there's not a zombie apocalypse happening. That would totally harsh my gig. The white is not as opaque as Prismacolor white. I will say that. But well, that's all right. We're going to be using a gel pen on this anyway. And because it's a little bit more translucent, I can use it in the bulb itself without it getting too out of hand. And it will just be a, like a more subtle, subtle sheen. And it starts to, you start to build a little bit of body here. Turn this around. I have a little bit easier time draw for whatever reason drawing the left side of things. I have easier time trying the left hand side of things. Probably because I can see really easily where my pencil tip is. I'm not going to burnish in yet. I don't want to do that yet because I'm going to add other colors to this. So this is looking grainy now, but it won't be by the time we're done. All right, let's do some black. Let's get that darkest value in here with a black color pencil here. This is where we can get in those deepest, the deepest values, the darkest values that we're going to have in this entire piece. We're going to assign with this dark pencil, with this black pencil. Finding our contrast is important because that's uh, that's how we create drama. It's how we create depth. There's a shadow on this side, so I want to bring that shadow darker. And I find myself working from my painting more than, than the reference. Okay. 
when when you use the black over a lighter area, you can get some nice texture that way too. Oops, I went went a little too far over there, but I'm hoping that just fades into the background. Getting sloppy. All right, so now I wanna do that little, I can't even see where I drew it, the little measurement on there. I can highlight that. I just wanna kinda of get it in there. I don't think I used any of this pencil yet. I think that's kind of, kind of pretty. I need some brown. Maybe this redwood color would be good. I, it's feeling a little too cool in here. I'm scumbling over for some texture. Give the well, maybe I don't need to sharpen it. I was thinking I'd give it a quick sharpen, but hmm. I'm wondering if I want to do the I think I'll probably do those with the gel pen because they are pretty bright. Uh, maybe I'll do that right now because that way they can stick to the paper a lot better. And then we can get our brightest values in there and that will be really good. We'll have the darkest and our brightest. Oh, I just saw a question. Uh, do you think the Derwent metallic pencils would also be a good choice to mix in for some of the finished touches? Um, I, I don't like to do that because I find that um, they don't, I mean, you could, you could definitely try it, but I find that the con, they don't provide enough contrast on, on a painting. I feel like if you, you have to use them over really dark areas and I don't know, I haven't found them to provide enough contrast in a painting. I find they're better on like a black paper for like special effects type situations. Trying to keep my lines fairly straight here. Get someone's in the background. We lost power this morning. And I have no idea what time it is. I, I actually, it's, okay, it's one o four. I just looked on my on my um, <laughs> on my computer, but it's it's so disconcerting. My regular clock is not uh, displaying the right time. All right, I am actually going to go in and start adding some bright highlights into the bottom. Otherwise, I'll putter around on this all day. So we'll get our brightest value in, and then we'll see what we need to do with um, our intermediate colors. Stippling works really good to enhance the texture that we've already been having.
this little area here is in need of some work. So reshape it a little bit here. You can use a wet brush to remove any gel pen that you don't like. And don't worry if something is just looks way too bold because you can um, you can tone it down as you go, so it's not it's not that big of a deal if it's if it's a little bold looking. Sometimes I see an edge, it's like, what was I drawing there? That doesn't seem to match anything here. A bit of a brushed te texture there and down here. You can smudge it with your fingers too while it's still... Well, it's still wet. Sometimes it's weird. It's like, how is there a highlight in there? There's got to be some other lighting source. And if I have a weird edge, I will go, even though it's not a highlight edge, sometimes I'll go and fix it with the gel pen, and then I'll just add darks in later, just so I can kind of get my mind around where an edge should be, because it looks weird, you know? All right. I think... Oh, you know what? I also have some new paint pens, too, that might be kind of fun to, to use on this uh, towards the end. We'll see. All right, so now we've got this peachy color. I want to add into the, the bulb. I think I need a little bit. Oh, you know what? I probably need more of like a, a coral color. Look through my, I think this one right here. Or maybe, you have to look at the tips of the pencils too to really get a good idea of what the colors are because it can be a little deceiving to look at the ends because like that looks kind of orangey brown and that tip looks almost like salmon-y coral. So, Definitely keep that in mind as you're working. You want to make sure you're getting the, the accurate color. I somehow made this little center area really crooked. It looks like there's kind of like an inner bulb in there. This is such a fun piece because, I mean, like you can keep on going with it and keep adding more and there's always more details to find. Get some of that teal color in the bulb as well. Neat thing about glass is like anything that's around it is kind of fair game as far as being reflected into it. Once 
some of this kind of this uh, Dijon yellow. I love how the white really almost resists the pencil, so I don't have to fuss about it or worry about it. I'm gonna go back to the black and get some. I think I'm gonna sharpen this really quick. I think I might have done the black in there with paint. But I'm going to go ahead and do it with pencil because I don't want to get this painting wet again. Ah, soft leads, tough to keep a point. Oh my gosh, speaking of colored pencils, the review I posted on Monday, people were very hot and heated in the, in the comments on that video. Um, because those pencils really were reminiscent of a famous brand. And um, I didn't realize it at first until I was, um, until I swatched them out. And then I really looked at the numbers and realized they were exactly like the polychromos pencils. And, um, because they weren't advertised as being like polychromos dupes or anything like that. But then apparently, like in Canada, all these sellers have been coming out with that same set of pencils and calling them polychromos and selling them like polychromos. And um, so it was like, wow, I didn't even know that. Uh, I didn't even know that that happened. So it was it was interesting. People were very, were very heated in there, which I can totally understand why. So if you're looking for a little hot tea, some juicy goss, as they say, go check out that video. <laughs> Thumbs up if you like the juicy goss. Gossip, as the kids say. I, I think I want some purpley gray. Some lavender gray would be just delightful. I think that's what this is, this lavender gray, lavender ash. And as you put more layers of colored pencil, the effect gets smoother and smoother because you're filling in the tooth of the paper. I'm kind of wondering if I did a darker background, a darker, uh, if I painted in the bulb a little darker. on my first one. It's been a while. It's been a while since I painted that. Back to the black. Oh, that black looks good, I think. Giving us some depth. I don't remember how long. The thing is, I'm a little nervous sometimes when I go to redo something I've done for like World Watercolor Month or Inktober um, on a video or to do a live stream. Because it's like, I don't have any clue how long I'm spending on these when I'm not like recording. Because I'm just like off in la-la land doing my thing, you know, vibing out and making art. And I have no concept of time if I'm not recording. So it's like, did that take me like an hour? Or did that take me three hours? And you know, it should, it will take me less time to redo it than it did the first time. But uh, not knowing how long it took me to begin with is a little, uh, I don't say stressful, but it's definitely, I definitely worry that, you know, we'll be here all day. <laughs> You guys don't have anything better to do, right? It's snowing out. Well, it's snowing out here, so we should be off the roads anyway. I'm always curious about what you guys are talking about. I love that they have the chat, the live chat replay now, because then I can go in and be nosy and see what you guys have been chit-chatting about. I feel like I need some more yellow. 
in the bulb area because it's definitely not popping as much as the uh, as my original. I'm gonna do some of this golden sun. Ah, there we go. Give maybe give this a little bit of a glow feeling around the filaments. Oh, and there's also these kind of swirly lines, like one, two, three, these four, like kind of like curvy, swirly lines. Reflections, I like that. And reflections of the filaments, too. Ooh, and maybe take some of this golden sun and add it into some of this brassy area. I think I might have went in with some Derwent metallic paint over after everything when it was dry, maybe too, because the way those those sparkles are kind of on top of everything makes me think that maybe I did. I think I need to go in with some paint though. That seems just way too, way too light overall. I wonder what will happen if I do that. So let's find out, shall we? I'm thinking I like the purplish black. I'm gonna clean my brush because I feel like I had some other stuff on that. It just looks black right now, but I think I'm just tapping off the extra paint. It's gonna beat up quite a bit because of all the pencil I have in here, but I think that will actually be good because it'll keep me from getting too over, uh, going too overboard with it. Because generally you wouldn't use pencil over watercolor. I mean, you wouldn't, I'm sorry, strike that, reverse it. You wouldn't use watercolor over pencil because it will beat up, but, I'm using it to kind of sink into the nooks and crannies and darken some areas there where I wasn't happy. Maybe some of the reddish brown too. Ooh, I like the reddish brown. That's a nice warm colory color. Hmm, maybe some of the yellow graphitant. And then while I'm at it, why don't I grab that metallic? I think it was the more opaque gold metallic, the sky right here. I think it was that one. Sorry for the focusing craziness if it's happening. I'm going to get it nice. This is a more of a pearl. It's that one right there. Um, it's more of a pearl than a sparkle. So it should be fairly opaque. And I think that might be what I used. Let's see. And if not, it might be that one. Because it does have a little bit of a glittery aspect to it. So let's just stipple some on there and see what we get. I love mixed media so much. Shake off the shackles of traditional watercolor. I was trained in traditional watercolor, by the way, so it feels a little shackly to me. <laughs> I liked it, though. I did it for a long time. Perish the thought of using opaque medium. But then I decided life's too short to conform to somebody's arbitrary ideas of how we should live our artistic lives. Oh, we claim that edge right there, fine and dandy, can't we, with that gold? A 
dry brushy brushy and that will make it nice and that's that's helping that's helping it's not there yet but it's helping but you know what we've got this kind of tealy pearly color that's nice and opaque in the derwent metallics so we'll go for that too I'm glad I did put some water on these because now they're nice and juicy. This is definitely not how I painted the first one. <laughs> Cause I did the green, the teal and colored pencil. I'm like, it's certain. memory isn't what it used to be <laughs> actually I never thought I would I would paint it again so I didn't really pay attention to how I was doing I was just kind of like, like going with flow and oftentimes when I'm doing just like kind of little experimental things um, I'm trying out different materials that I don't typically use or whatever just new came in that people wanted me to review and I don't necessarily remember what they were because maybe they weren't something that, um, you know, stuck with me and something as I was going to use a lot. So, you know, that could be the case as well. So what I think I'll do, since I have been using some, you know, paint, I think I'm going to grab my bleed proof white and a liner brush or just a small round and finish up with that. I think I'll work just fine. I'm gonna go with the number one round. This one is not in my craft ammo set. I didn't put a lot of small common brushes in that set because um, I wanted it to be the brushes that were harder to find and expensive to buy if you have to buy them individually. So I wanted an affordable way to get um, some of the larger brushes that are really nice that are more difficult to find rather than just repeat what everybody has already. Um, so I just wanna make sure I don't have that too runny. I do add a little bit of water to it. I've been using this jar of Dr. Peach Martin's Bleed Proof White for about five years, and I'm like halfway through. This stuff is awesome. It lasts an age, and if it gets too thick, just add a little water to it. It's still super opaque even when it's thick. It is awesome. This is actually will be a little bit brighter value than... Uh, Uh, then the gel pen because it is so much more opaque and a plus you have a brush so you know you're putting in a a, a thicker a thicker amount of it oops oh no you know what I did I dropped a little bit of water on the side and that is going to leave me a little blah. Oh no, I caught it in time. Um, so if you drop water on a on a wash and you and you don't realize it, um, and then you go to blot it away a few minutes later, then it will lift up the paint, and leave you a little water spot, which is kind of like a bloom. And if you like that, that's a great way to get that effect. But if you don't, then blot it as soon as you see it and hope for the best. And you know when I'm when I'm doing a uh, a new painting, even if it's a copy of something I've already done, I might have to change things up because a painting needs something different than what, you know, my original needed. Like, I might need to add more contrast. I might need to add a highlight here or there that wasn't there before because of how things happened, how things progressed. So I look at, even if I'm copying something I've done before, I'm looking at how can I make this better you know how can I improve this painting I'm not like how can I make it exactly like the other one it's more important that I make the painting stand alone on its own and look good in my opinion anyway okay do need some darker areas there so um and I'm going to do some colored pencils to kind of get rid of some of the stipply texture that is a little much um I think I'll do the greenish black just because there is so much green I don't know if I've used that one yet, but I'm just gonna add in some sculpting here because I got a little, I lost my shape a little bit here and there. 
I will take questions again at the end of the of the video, so don't worry if you're posting questions, I will get to them. Now there is a shadow on this side. I'm gonna try to reclaim it. My apologies for the water pump. Don't know why it's going on. Maybe the zombies have infiltrated and they're using the restroom. I don't know. Hope not. So rude. Rude zombies. Oops, that needs to be a little more rounded, but I'll get, I'll fix that in a bit. So what I'll do is I'll let this dry while I do some Q&A, and then I'll come back with the final pass of colored pencils, I think. I don't like this one as much as I like the one I did in my sketchbook, but um, I think that's pretty common for me because I concentrate, I think I concentrate better when I'm not filming and also I think I'm a little bit more into painting something the first time I've painted it and then I kind of I think I kind of lose interest a little bit I'm going in just darkening a few areas that see a little like they just seem a little too uh not contrasty enough I guess need the contrast to get the drama. All right, soften a couple edges and then I will take some Q&A. This won't take very long to dry because it's just thin layers. Ah. Just softening some of these marks. All right, let's do some Q and A. So if you're watching the replay, go ahead and skip ahead a couple minutes and you will be back into the painting action. All right. Oh, I uh Berlina suggests the uh the graphite tinted graphite pencils from Stabilo. Those should work fine. Yeah, yeah, you could sketch us in even the graphite tint pencils if you had the pencils and not the the paints, um, just kind of try to give it a good layer. Uh, maybe use the size of the side of the pencil so it doesn't, um, you know, leave a bunch of marks and dissolve it. That should be a good, um, a good option too. Brett says, I, for one, I'm glad you went over to the dark side, Lindsay. You were the first teacher that I felt gave me permission, a permission slip to do me. You are so awesome. Thank you so much. And the replay, of course, will be on my blog and YouTube channel. There's still photos of the finished artwork on my um, on my blog and on my Instagram page. But you'll have to scroll back a ways on Instagram to find it. Uh, Nicole says, you're helping get, get through the workday, versioning out 15 billboards. So thank you. Oh, billboards. Lots of hellos. Hello, everyone. Joey asks, having a hard time getting any pencil to layer over the metallic watercolor I used for the pipe, even a quick spray of workable fixative, maybe too heavy on the metallic suggestions. Sounds like your paper might not be dry. 
I would dry it with a hair dryer or something for a few seconds. That will often bring the tooth back. Um, if that doesn't work, there's a product I'll show. I've got a little bottle of it here. Um, it's really handy. It's called Touch Up Texture and Brush and Pencil makes it. I bought mine at Blick.com. Um, I think it was a, probably around $5, but what you do is you brush this over an area that's not taking any more pencil. And what it does is it puts down a little bit of grit. Now you could probably use clear gesso as well. Um, you let it dry and then you can go over it with your pencil. And it, it's like it's like being able to spot apply um, workable fixative. Um, it's wonderful. And you can actually mix this with a white powder that they sell called titanium white, which is ground up colored pencil white, basically. And so like instead of doing the highlights with the gouache or gel pen, you would do it with this mixed with the white and then it won't flake off um, if it was to get scratched or anything. So um, I highly recommend the products from Brush and Pencil. If you're a colored pencil artist, they're definitely worth looking into. Um, Blick, I got mine on Blick. Uh, it was a pretty good price. It was a couple of years ago, though. So I, I think you can get them from brushandpencil.com, Blick. And I'm not sure what other sellers sell them, but that's this is so handy. And it's it's got a little, it's like a nail polish bottle applicator. So, you know, you don't even have to get it out of another brush. So really, really good stuff. And I'm just looking back to see if there's any more questions and then we're going to go in and finish it up. I think we're really close for it to be done. If I missed your question, feel free to go ahead and post it, um, post it again and I will get to it. I'll get to it at the end when we're all done painting. Oh, Joe Miski says, just FYI, we love Learn to Draw with Lindsay here in the chat today. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, that class is uh, was so much fun. Oh, it's been a couple of years since I released that class. All right. I think I'm caught up. So let me see. I'm going to just blast this real quick because it feels a little cool to the touch. And if your paper feels cool to the touch, that means that it isn't dry. So, oops, wait a minute. Why would that be wet? That's not even the right painting. Oh, my gosh. I'm losing it. That shouldn't be wet at all. Have I been switching paintings? I hope not. <laughs> oh, I felt off today. It was funny. I was having a grapefruit last night uh, for dessert. And I was like, I couldn't taste it. And I was like this. And I was afraid that like I had COVID or something because I could not taste my grapefruit. And and I couldn't, I couldn't smell it. Okay, no, I could taste it, but I couldn't smell it. And I'm like... Jason, can you smell this grapefruit? And he was, he was, he said he could smell it. I could not smell the grapefruit. And, um, and it didn't, and it was just very bitter tasting. It wasn't very sweet. And so I took a COVID test, but it was negative. So, so that's good. But then I was like, and I was smelling other things. Like I could smell peanut butter and I could smell, you know, candles and stuff like that. So I don't know what was up with that. I guess it was just kind of a bland grapefruit, but I was like really nervous because I had gone to paint my ceramics that I had done on the pottery wheel, they got fired and I went to glaze them at the pottery shop and I was hanging around some older people and I was like, oh no. But luckily I didn't have COVID because I was like, oh no, you would gotten other people sick. I was very, uh, I probably wouldn't have taken a test otherwise because I'm just at home all the time by myself. But the fact that I had been out with people, I was like, oh no, because I'd want to let them know if I did. Of course, I wouldn't know where I would have gotten it because it's not like I have a life and go anywhere. <laughs> I, I would like a little bit more teal on this. I think I might have to go. I think I will actually add a little water on my teal paint and let that soak for a second or two in case I want to add a little bit more. I feel like maybe I was a little too timid with contrast here on this painting versus the one I did in my sketchbook. And that could be, um, you know, me not wanting to royally screw up live on YouTube and me just being like, wahoo, fun time, Lindsay, working on your sketchbook. Being all inhibited, all inhibited in the live stream. What the heck? Hmm. That's actually, it's coming along. 
not mad at this. Maybe I just need to make these a little bit bolder. I feel like there needs to be some marks of energy. It's probably some scientist watching this. Be like, that is not what an Edison bulb looks like, lady. Well, I'm not a scientist, so that's why. Um, let's see, what was I gonna do? I think I was gonna add some more dark sumi -e paint. I think I wanna do the blue-ish one. I don't know why, just I feel like I need, nothing is cutting through. I need something a little bit darker here. I'm not getting the contrast that I need. It's bumming me out. It's you definitely need to swatch these um, these paints or really pay attention and make sure you have them in the right order in their box because it they all look black except for the blackish yellow or the yellowish black that looks kind of green. <laughs> ironically, uh, it's kind of tricky. But they're a lot of fun. I was really surprised that they granulated because I don't think of Sumi E ink as being a granulating color, a uh, granulating product. I think of it being uh, more matte and just kind of smooth. So I was really surprised by that. I would like to try their darker, the darker version. I saw the prettiest set of paints and I have no idea where you can find it, but um, I saw somebody using them on, and it wasn't, it wasn't an American YouTube channel and it wasn't an English speaking YouTube channel, but they were using this. It was, um, they were like the Gansai Tambi paints, but it was a different brand. I think they were in these shallow wooden boxes that stacked up and there was like an owl wood burned on the box. They were so beautiful. And I tried to find them. I don't know where they came from because she didn't have a link, but they were so pretty. And I just love those little wooden boxes. I was thinking I could get some wooden boxes and put my paints in the wooden boxes and that would be cool. Then I wouldn't have to, because they're probably very expensive. I wouldn't have to go buy more paint. Have to go buy, yeah. Uh, let's see. I probably shouldn't have looked at my, my painting. I probably should look at the reference photo the whole time because now I'm doing a copy of a copy. And so it gets a little bit, diluted every time i'll try some of this blackish brown i think i did use it in some areas we'll get some water on the barrel there but i'm thinking that i might want to add that to some of the carved like or pressed numbers here I might just have to call this a day. I could fuss with it all day long. But, oh, you know what we could do, guys? You know what I might have used on this? <laughs> you guys know what I might have used? What, what if I might have used these? Now that I think about it, because... I'm looking at like that that shimmery stuff, and I'm thinking the shimmery stuff might have been this. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. Oh, I need a brain transplant. Let's dry this real quick. Guys, I think I might have used the Stabilos. I think I blocked them from my memory because I was so disgusted with how short they, how much pigment are actually in them. I did a did a review on them if you want to go see it. I'm gonna see the the short one. Is it in there? Yes, it's in there. It's found at the bottom. So I was I was disgusted with how expensive these were, but I had so many review uh, requests to review them. So I carved it from the opposite end and I sharpened it and like so this is how long they are, but like that's how much product you actually get. And I was just so disgusted that I think I like blocked it from my memory. But I think I'm gonna use these on that one now that I'm like thinking like, I know I use some promo flow pencils, but how come it's not sticking? And I think I went in with some of the, uh, with the Stabilos. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, I, I usually don't have such a memory problem, but I totally, totally forgot so much about this, about this painting. Now, was it this one? Let's give it a try. 
I think it might have been. <laughs> I think I might have used these, but this also looks much lighter. These are these these do glide on. They are very silky. Of course, the paper is a little warm too. That's that's helping it. But yeah, I wonder if I did. Let's just see what this gold looks like. Gosh, it might might have. I need to start doing some Sudoku puzzles. Work on that memory, man. Oh man. You know, I might have used these. I'm not sure. But it stands to reason because of how easily these lay stuff down on there. Is that the color that I used or was this? Huh. That could very well be. Yeah, this black is really uh, standing out, and they're just I'm just kind of going really lightly so I catch a texture. Ooh, look at that texture. I like that. I did leave these out nearby so that I could grab them and use them because they were expensive, and I want to get my money's worth out of them. Huh, how about that? I I don't know if that's what I used, but they certainly worked. They worked fine. We got some white highlights. Let's see. This might not be delicate enough, but it might work all right in the bulb. I don't want green in the bulb, though. That's all right. That's funny. I'm still not sure if that's what I used or not. Oh, man. Refine a little bit with the color pencil. And I think we're going to call this done. Because I am done working on it. I don't typically like to paint things twice. Uh... Although I do like the fact that I get a good, get some good feedback from people when I do the World Watercolor Month and um, Inktober. I'm just going to do some kind of like, these are, the white is not super strong, so I can do some hard reflections, but have them not super bold. Yeah, we will call that done. I think it's all right. It's fine good enough for good enough for getting the the idea across you can go from you can figure out you know and go from there it's all right it's not my best work <laughs> but it's not my worst <laughs> this does need a little bit more if you have any questions go ahead and post them in there i will take one more uh one more round of questions now maybe, maybe I just need a little bit of white gel pen and then we'll call it a day. I wonder if it's still snowing. I couldn't remember if my, I, I have several pairs of boots there. It's kind of more of like a um, orphan boot situation where my kids just leave stuff home. So uh, there were a pair of boots that were, I think they were Maisie's at one point, but she didn't really like them. I bought them for her for Christmas. It's so hard to buy kids clothes um, a few years ago and she never really wore them. And I couldn't remember if they were very easy to slip on, but I couldn't remember if they leaked or not last time I wore them. So I wore them today and by golly, my feet were soaking wet by the time I came home and they're, they have no tread on them. So they are going to be thrown away. And I will choose another pair from the pile tomorrow. <laughs> I need to buy some boots for myself. I think I'm going to splurge and get, um, I don't know what. I don't know what's a good winter boot. Maybe L.L. Bean. I don't know. I don't really like the look of the bean boots. 
But it's not like I'm out there winning fashion shows. I'm out there walking the dog. So maybe something I'm not going to slip in and break my butt. I kind of like this this uh, hatchy. I like the hatchy business. I like the scritchy liney lines. Kind of makes it look like brushed metal, I think. And bring that highlight right down to the bottom. All right, I'm done fussing with that. I think that looks good. I think I'll sign my name with white on this one. I did it on black on that one. It doesn't really show up, uh, which is fine because my handwriting is not great. But uh, but there it is there. That's the instructional portion of today's broadcast. I'm going to answer some questions. If you're watching the replay and you don't care about questions, then you can you rest assured you haven't missed anything. Uh, all right. If you have the, a question, again, use the word question in all upper caps and then write your question as normal and I will be able to catch it. Horsewoman2000 asks, are the Stabilo and Neo2 comparable, both water-soluble, whoops, both water-soluble wax? Yes, um, I would recommend the Neo Color 2s over the Stabilos for the reasons that they are, they have light fast ratings, they are cheaper, and they're an artist quality product where these are marketed to children. So who knows? There are some like stars, like these stars are supposed to correlate with a light fast rating. I don't know what they are. Pastels generally are not um, great for light fastness, but uh, let's see what purple is. That should not be very light fast. That one has a two. So it must be the lower the light fast, the lower the stars, the lower the light fast number. That one's a blue and that's two. The ultramarine is usually pretty good. Black has five stars. So maybe five stars is the best and one is the worst. Pastels generally are not very light fast. That one's got three. So I don't know. Um, I don't really know how well those will last. I will say if you have the full set of Neo Color 2s or the 84 set anyway, these are not duplicates. They actually, are, they're mostly unique colors. So it's, you could add on. But I would say go with the Neo Color 2s. They're so similar. I think that maybe, I think the Stabilos are just a, a titch softer and that's why they're in the wood casing. But I don't think they're different enough to justify both products unless you want them both. And for, for me, in America, they're more expensive. The Stabilos are more expensive. Uh, Wandering Star says, question, can the Neo Color 2s be used instead of the Stabilos? Absolutely. Uh, Creative Cindy says, question, where do you live? Uh, in Maine, USA. Oh, Patty says it's snowing in Indiana. You guys are probably getting more than we are. We're only going to, like, I think we have maybe two inches, but I think it's it's supposed to turn to rain. So it was very slippery, though, walking on the road today. Uh, Creative Cindy asks, what do you do with your makes on YouTube? Well, stuff that's in sketchbooks, just live in the sketchbooks. Um, sometimes I sell my paintings and cards, and sometimes I just mail my cards to friends. It depends on what, what the thing is. Um, I have big portfolios full of paintings that I don't really know what to do with at this point in time, but um, they'll keep. I'll do a show sometime and sell them probably, or might license the images if they're, you know, desired by a company. I keep most of it though. Um, Clark says, thanks again for the new role with the channel. She became our mo one of our moderators last week. I appreciate you volunteering and moderating for us. Uh, Brett says, if anyone's ever looking for Stabilos at a lower price, Joggles frequently puts them on sale, both as sets and individuals, since they work well for mixed media. That's great to know because I don't have all the colors. I got the set that had the pastels in it. It was the 18 color set. So instead of six of the basic colors, it had the six new pastels. So if I decide that I want to get some of those other colors, that's a good option. And I met the lady that owns Joggles at, at a stamp show before. She's a nice woman. Um, I'll try to remember to add a link to her shop in the video description um, to the Stabilos. That's good to know. I think they these are a rebrand of a product they used to have called Stabilo Tones, which were an artist quality product. I don't think they were quite as chunky, but they were like, I think the, the lead might have been this chunky, but maybe not the casing. Um, and they had like 60 colors, but they got discontinued. I don't know why. There are a lot of artists that really like them. And I would be more, I would be much more likely to pay that price for something that's that I know is um, 
you know, I'm not a big light fast. I mean, I'm not somebody who's going to like preach about light fastness because a lot of my stuff's in sketchbooks, but I also expect if I'm buying a children's product for it to cost a lot less than an artist quality product. So, you know, that's where my big stink with that was. It's not that I have any problem with Stabilo or that product. I have a problem with the price of it, quite frankly. Uh, Clark Fine Art asks, question, how much snow have you got, Lindsay? We have about three inches already up here. Also art related, I have Derwent drawing in the light fast. Would chromoflow be needed or redundant in the hoard? Um, well, we, ha we had about two inches of snow, I think, when I was walking, but it's not going to last. It's really wet snow. Um, Derwent light fast. The, the chroma flows are softer than light fast, and there are some brighter colors that aren't in the light fast range just because of the limitations of what pigments you can get in a light fast color. Like there's, a, I'd say, a lot more brights in chroma flow. I don't think you probably necessarily mix those two together because if you're using the Derwent chroma flow, you're probably using that just for the ease of use and the vibrant colors and the immediacy. But if you're using light fast, which is a product that cost twice as much um, and could be much more, it just depends on the, the sales you find. Like per pencil, I think a Chroma Flow is under $2 and uh, Light Fast is almost $5 a pencil. So I don't think you'd wanna mix them because then you could end up with purples and reds and corals and things like that from the Chroma Flow, flow range fading on you. Um, I think on my blog, I actually have a light fast chart from Chroma Flows because they released it at one point and they, and Durant gave me permission to republish it on my blog um, because they, they actually did have light fast ratings for the Chroma Flows and the Chroma Flows were actually pretty good. A lot of the colors were, so you could pick and choose, but I think probably the colors that rated high on light fastness and Chroma Flow would be ones you'd find in the Derwent light fast range. So I would say, I would say not redundant, but I don't think you would use them together just because of the, you know, the, the high price tag of the light fast is to make light fast artwork. So I don't think you'd want to mix in stuff that wasn't light fast with it in general. But if you want the set of less expensive pencils that were really soft, that were really easy to use uh, for like card making or adult coloring book or work in a sketchbook, I think you'd be fine. Or even just multimedia effects where, you know, you're just putting a little streak here and there. It's not like the basis of the, of the whole painting. Um, so long, long, I guess it's a long story short. Uh, did you want me to enable you? You should have told me if you wanted me to enable you to buy them or if you want me to talk you out of buying them. That would have been easier, Angela, if you had <laughs> told me that. <laughs> I could have gone either way because, you know, there's definitely pluses and minuses. All right. I I'm just going to see if any new questions came in at the end, but I think I'm relatively caught up. Nerdy watercolorist says, do you think instead of colored pencils, I could use gouache? Of course, the technique would be different, but can I get a, diff a similar look? Sure, sure. You could dry brush if you want that texture with your gouache. You can stipple. Yeah, totally. <laughs> After 40 Art says, probably best to talk us out of buying things at this point. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Oh my gosh. If your, if your hoard looks like my hoard, yeah, I probably should do a public service. <laughs> so you don't need any more stuff. Creative Cindy says, you got me coloring. So your version of getting people to do art has worked on me. I hope that makes sense. Oh, that's nice. I'm glad I got you to do some art. That's great. Patty Bull says, do you find it easier to work larger or smaller? Um, Patty, I don't really have, um, I don't, I don't think one is easier than the other. Um, it's usually more time constraints. Like if I'm doing World Watercolor Month or Inktober, uh, I need, I, I'm doing that on top of my everyday work in general. So working smaller just makes me fit it into the amount of time. Um, I, I do tend to fill whatever space I take. So, you know, um, I guess it doesn't really matter. I think it's just how much time do you have? Go, you could go bigger if you have a little more time. All right. I think I am all set. I think I'm caught up. All right, guys, I want to thank you. So we got one more question here. Noreen Rame asks, have you ever used block soft pastels do you mean oh color block soft pastels i haven't but you know they look like um they look like 
a lot of the Korean made uh, pastels, kind of like the Arteza, which are quite pigmented, a little on the firm side. Um, but I haven't personally used that iteration of it. So many pastels are private labeled from Mungio and other companies. So it is, um, I, you know, I, I haven't tried them all. There's so many out there. Just like colored pencils, there's so many private labeled pencils. There's probably only five different pencils out there. They're just private labeled a million times. Uh, not the ones that are by like um, Derwent or Karen Dosh or Faber-Castell. Those are all their own unique products. But then the ones that are made in China or um, Thailand, uh, they could be private labeled over and over again for different different companies. All right, guys, I want to thank you so much. Please give me a thumbs up before you leave. That will help other people find this tutorial because YouTube will be more likely to recommend it. Um, if you want to leave a comment in the comment section after the video, that also helps with YouTube deciding what to uh, what to show people. And if you have a friend that you would love to see this tutorial or any of my other tutorials, please share a link to my channel with them and uh, let them know where all the cool kids hang out. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye-bye.